And then there's Frank Gore. Frank Gore is signing a one-day contract with the San Francisco 49ers to finally retire from the NFL. And the oh, next man. time you see the inconvenient truth, who uh, uh, I nicknamed him, which is what I, I gave him that nickname. This is way back in the day when he was Good you know, running for the 49ers and the Al Gore documentary, The Inconvenient Truth was in theaters near you and very popular and Frank was crushing it for the Niners and I was doing the game day highlights show with Mooch and Dion on NFL Network the inconvenient truth he was exactly that came off the campus at Miami you take a look at the top 10 running back list the most prolific rushers in the history of the National Football League and Frank Gore is above Barry Sanders and beneath Walter Payton with exactly 16,000 rushing yards. Emmett's in the hall. Walter's in the hall. Barry Sanders is fourth on the list is in the hall. Adrian Peterson's going to the hall. Curtis Martin is in the hall. LaDainian Tomlinson is in the hall. Jerome Bettis is in the hall. Eric Dickerson's in the hall. Tony Dorsett's in the hall. Frank Gore's going to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And in case anybody's out there, and I am talking to the man across the yeah, just, the studio man, from us here. I don't want to do this again. Now, I know you don't want to do it again, and I, certainly on a day like this, but uh, you do give voice to a lot of people who feel like he's just a stat compiler. He's just stuck around for very long. And what did he really do? Um, here are two accomplishments. You say, well, what was the game that stood out? Unfortunately, when you lose the Super Bowl, it doesn't stand out for you. But Frank Gore in the Super Bowl in New Orleans – on the 3rd of February, 2013, in the Superdome against the Baltimore Ravens, 19 rushes for 110 yards and a score. It's entirely possible if Kaepernick does find Crabtree in the end zone and Jim is the Harbaugh who wins that day and not John, it's entirely possible Frank Gore could have been in the mix for the most valuable player of that game. Kaepernick probably would have won it, I don't know. Ravens fans would have said the most valuable person of the game was whoever purposefully unplugged (laughs) the Superdome from the New Orleans electrical grid. (laughs) As Ray Lewis to this day still contends. Kaepernick had a nice game that day. 300 yards and 60 rushing and a touchdown. He might have been the MVP and then have a whole different conversation about that. Oh, he definitely would have been MVP with those 300, Chris. But Frank had a heck of a day. He did. He actually had a good playoff run. For and that year. he did. He did indeed. And then there's this particular statistic that I got from the NFL Network. When I asked, who is the oldest player to rush for 1,000 yards in a season? John Riggins and John Henry Johnson, both in the Hall of Fame, each had 1,000-yard rushing seasons in their age 35 season. How about that? Wow. Riggins in 84 had 1,239 rush yards, and John Henry Johnson had just over 1,000 yards, 1,048 in 1964. Only two other running backs have had a 1,000-yard rushing yards in their age 31 season or older since 2010. Adrian Peterson had 1,042 in his age 33 season in 2018, and Frank Gore led the Colts in rushing in 2016 when he was 33, with 1,025 rushing yards. And um, in 2014, he was 31, and he had 1,106 rushing yards. Age 34. Correct. In 2014, he was 31. And he was age 34, correct, in Indianapolis, when he had 961 rush yards. 33, he had 1,025 I mean, could you imagine? Will there will will the question is will we ever see a thousand yard rushing season from somebody age thirty three? Again, not the way they're running through Correct. running backs these days, Rich. Well, also, may, the, the running the ball is just we not as emphasized. Might as not as see it again. So but that stat alone shouldn't get you. In the ball. I, I, I know that, but you put it all together. Sixteen thousand rush yards is no joke, man. Right, honestly. Emmett, you Walter. Just say great. I know, they see, but he doesn't want to go there again. But he says he doesn't want to go there again. He, said he thinks Ryan Fitzpatrick should be in the Hall of Fame. See, Ryan Fitzpatrick has had a more memorable career than Frank Gore. Yeah, I got to be honest. When you were giving your Ryan Fitzpatrick soliloquy and saying all the excitement, I, I, I don't know. 
They threw 223 touchdowns and 169 picks. You know what? He never started I'm over I'm not saying 14 he should be games. in the Hall of Fame in a million years. Oh, no, I, I, I don't agree with yeah, him but I mean, by any stretch I of the think imagination. I romanticizing the guy a Well, because, you no, know, I mean, look, in the day and age where there's conversation like this on shows like this, there's social media where you – you now see immediately what people say right after a game or look like right after a game, and you see people having fun. It's There's there's less fun sometimes. You know, we live in a day and age where a guy shows up with a backwards ball cap and a phone going to a, to, going to a, a, a post-game show, and he goes on his show the next day and says that's indicative of somebody not taking the job seriously. Like, that's the world we live in. Uh, like, like, heart attack funny, right? And then Fitz shows up, and he's got – Chest hair and beard and all that stuff and a track suit and whatever. So, of course, you're going to that, – that's fun. There's not enough of that. Also Frank and it's Gore, endearing. Frank Gore but never Frank, showed us any personality. But Frank, Frank is a different guy. Yeah. It's just a different cat from a different spot, different place, different lot in life. And what he's done with his life is unbelievable. And in terms of football and what you put down on the field and in the record books, this guy is a surefire Hall of Famer and should make it five years from today. That's the way I view him. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here. 